As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Can you please guide me to the reality of the huruf Ya? Many of my relatives say that the word Ya should be only used for Allah. This is a Wahhabi belief <laughs> Even if you learned all the realities of Ya and all the huruf you won't change them in their understanding and there, there's many deep realities. It's not about the huruf of ya because the haqqaiq of ya and yaqeen and all its realities but it's more that they don't want to call upon anyone other than Allah And the immense ocean of hypocrisy with this aqeedah that they believe like that because they call upon everyone all day long. So when they're on the road and they have a flat tire, you tell them, go back and now say, Ya Allah, don't pick up your phone, don't call tow truck, don't call police, just say, Ya Allah. So their concept of, of support that only should come from Allah Again we said before we talked the other thing, you can become so superficial that everything is just that. Explain the mobile phone, Allah Explain math, what's Allah yeah. Explain you, Allah What is that, what kind of answer is that? This is a… Allah loves those whom seek realities. Not something empty that just you default to this simple understanding. Of course Allah is owner of everything. He wants you to understand the haqqaiq and search its reality. Everything has a reality. So this madhab that is designed by shayateen so that and especially in last days Dajjal is pushing, pushing, pushing this because we said before the key to Allah and that was the home nasheed and this was the only door to Allah is through Muhammadun Rasulullah It's the key. So Dajjal wants what? Lose the key, now try to get through the door. That you are from La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and you don't want to have that love, that respect and the calling upon Sayyidina Muhammad you lost the key. Then what make you different from Jewish people, Christian people, Buddhist people, uh, other people? Everyone says they believe in Allah but what makes you to be Muslimun is that you believe in Muhammadun Rasulullah. There is nothing but Allah, everybody agrees there is nothing but Allah except somebody way off and even them if you throw them into chal they're going to call, oh well, Allah help me. They, they called on many before but in difficulty everybody only calls on the reality of Allah They know Allah is the only creator but what distinguishes us is Muhammadun Rasulullah so these are immense realities and love and, and the calling upon support and many different examples through Qur'an that Allah gives to the believers. But the main thing, main thing is with this type of madhab and belief just don't argue with them, it brings a darkness to the heart. No need to try to convince these people who believe like this, just Peace be upon you and keep your practices to yourself so that your heart is not in danger of shak and doubt. Because in these last days it's like walking on water. If Allah begin to give the believer a strong iman and faith, he's walking on water through oceans of difficulty. You start to listen to these talks and listen to other people's videos and listen to these uh, people, it's going to only pull the reality out and before you know it you're, you're lost the key. And that's all that Dajjal wants is everybody lose the key and enter his way.
inshaAllah to protect us and, and, and guide us all inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please explain uh, the Muhammadan government and who are the Sahibul Waqt? Muhammadan government, that's like a whole talk, yeah, inshaAllah. That uh, there's a government from heavens and it's Sultanat, and that's why in all these knots and the salawats, everything, there's a, a kingdom. The kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that kingdom of heaven, its sultanate is Sayyidina Muhammad and is even dis described for those whom are Christian of background and listen and listening, it's described in the book of Revelation. John's ascent into the Divinely Presence and he sees the emerald throne, green throne, the green dome, all of these realities and he sees seated upon this emerald throne is the king and he's not God, he's the king. So many, many different realities and, and understandings. But the kingdom and the sultanat is under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad And then the structure for the Muhammadan government or then the different awliyaullah that comprise a symbol of a triangle that they have from the one on top, then the imams, then the kutubs, then all of the different structures of the awliya, all the way to the bottom length which are the, the there's no lower level but they have a different responsibility that is many of them and they become fewer and fewer on the top. So it's the symbol of a triangle that this is their structure. When one passes away from the top then from this structure they move up into that rank and into that reality. So they don't ever place somebody in a position that they haven't been trained all their life in their different responsibilities. So they're governments, you start like senator then you become this, then you become that, then you, you get into the council of so and so. So it is a whole structure that has to move. InshaAllah we have articles on the websites of, of these different realities, these different names and that takes a whole sort of uh, presentation. And Sahab al-Waqt Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi that all and another understanding for Sahab al-Waqt is Imam Ali salam, that all the turuqs because of the immensity of difficulties and the immensity of realities that are coming upon the earth that no one shaykh wants to hold, that that is a paralyzing burden. And that all these that were prophesied in Nadi Ali, what page is Nadi Ali? 49 sir. 45. 49. 45. Were prophesied in Nadi Ali when these awliyaullah wrote these, these nasheeds and these praisings. No it's not 49. 49, 45. 45. That all of these realities were return the trust to the reality of Sayyidina Imam Ali I think it's in this Nadi Ali for people to go back and look at the English that the, the trust of Islam was handed to Imam Ali that he would safeguard the deen. And he would safeguard the deen because the soul of this deen are the turuqs. Who's, who's the soul? If Islam is the body, tariqah is its soul. They, they keep the reality of Islam because the soul of something is what keeps the, the immensity of the beauty. It's not your physicality that is astonishing but it's the beatific nature of your soul that makes you to be an astonishing individual. If your soul is darkened and black, well, this person is of, of no value to anyone. So Islam is the shell and tariqah is its soul. It brings all the realities and beauty of Holy Qur'an, all the realities and beauties of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why all the beatific realities flow from tariqah and ahl tariqah and all the history of all the uloom 
came from these realities and from these shaykhs and the students of these shaykhs. So that's the immensity of, of that reality. That trust for these last days, every shaykh that passed away they gave the real inheritance back to Imam Ali and that he would hold the tariqahs salam, and that he would safeguard the soul of Islam for the days of difficulty to hand them to his grandson Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi which is the lineage of Imam al Husayn. So these are immense realities and immense blessings. So the one whom holding now throughout this reality is Imam Ali and that dress and that blessing is moving towards Imam Mahdi and all awliyaullah are under the sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi So shaykhs of different tariqahs are many. But don't ever call the shaykhs of the tariqahs the shaykhs of this sultanate and the authority of this sultanate and the titles of these sultanates. There are many in this Muhammadan government that they don't sit on any table and head any tariqah. But the Ahlul Dhikr they may be sitting in an association somewhere hidden and they may be very high ranking in the Muhammadan government. So means not just call everyone from the, the tariqah and the leaders of the tariqah and give them all these government titles just because of the virtue of your love for the tariqah, that has something completely unrelated. So the Muhammadan government is a Muhammadan government, the Sultanate Sayyidina Muhammad that reflection to Imam Ali now and that reflection to Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi now and that one is the Sahib al-Imdad, the one whom is giving all imdad, all madad, all support to all awliyaullah. So alhamdulillah all that we need is this love of Sayyidina Muhammad love of Ahlul Bayt, love of Ashab al-Nabi and having good character. This good character then dresses us from the immensity of this, this way and this path and then Allah guides us to the turuqs. Tariqat al-Naqshbandiyyat al-Aliyah is an immense school of esoteric knowledges and the army and military, United States Air Force is the United States Air Force. Annapolis is a university in which all the major generals have graduated from. But you don't call Annapolis the United States Air Force, you understand? West Point, all the top generals in America have graduated from a, a college called West Point. You can't get into it without a letter from a senator to acknowledge who you are and super high degree uh, grades. So they put out such a caliber of people that they all became generals because of their training and the level of training, the le level of their academic achievement. So that school produces generals. So Naqshbandi produces kings produces very high ranking souls because of the uloom and the immensity of its realities. Its love for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, its love for Imam Ali we call the two winged tariqah, they're carrying the two streams, the stream of the Siddiqiyah and the holy companions and the stream of Ahlul Bayt and the inheritance of the family of Sayyidina Muhammad by Sayyidina Imam Jafar as Sadiq brings the two wings into Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah. So because of the immensity of that school, yeah they produce big time generals, big time representatives of the Muhammadan kingdom but they are two separate realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, what is the spiritual reality of seeing the moon in bright daylight? I understand it's a natural phenomena linked to moon phases but is there a deeper understanding? By physically seeing the moon in bright daylight you saw the moon. But the reality of the moon is what's important when we said you study, go get the rising sun of the west, it's all about the sun and the moon. 
Shamsi wal qamar, Shamsi wal qamar, why Allah keeps mentioning this because our life is to be qamaroon because you're not shams, you're not a claiming to be the, the light of the universe is that you have to be qamaroon, the student that is continuously being tested, being tested, having life of testing and that your focus as a moon is always follow the light. So our light is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and we move in that path, always in that path. The moon doesn't start to go in a different direction and orbit and watch different channels and watch and mix some, some reiki with this, with that, no. The moon is just focused on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and if I want to learn something it has to be a Muhammadan haqqaiq. The Muhammadan haqqaiq has meditation, the Muhammadan haqqaiq has healing, the Muhammadan haqqaiq has uloom from the knowledges of letters, knowledges of, of uh, numbers, everything. So this, the moon is always following that path and that has then the immensity of the realities, what's the purpose of the sun, what does the sun do, what's the purpose of the moon in our lives, then we understand that we are in need of that light, we're in need of the reality of the moon which are only Allah and this, this is the quality of our life on this earth. So alhamdulillah it has deep realities and that is on the rising sun. The rising sun is all about the, the ishraqiyoon and the reality in the last days that Imam al-ishraqiyoon is raising those whom are ishraqiyoon in their soul. That in the midst of a darkness that will overtake the earth in its most difficult time, Allah is preparing souls that are ishraqiyoon, that they're going to rise like the sunrise. And they're not in need of an outside sun but their soul will be illuminating everything that Allah wants it to illuminate. So there's an immense reality in the rising sun of the west because this is a hadith from Sayyidina Muhammad that the sun would rise from the west. So if you don't understand what the sun is, we don't understand what Prophet was describing. And the most west of west before it becomes east is west coast. So any more than that into the ocean and we're in Japan and then we entered into east. Yeah. So it means something happening on this west coast of this earth that Prophet was describing 1500 years ago and that knowledges and the sun would rise, means this ishraqiyoon would rise from this region and illuminate the entire world onto the other side. Because mm. the realities that were in the east have all left, they left their reality, they left their deen. You see videos of what's happening in these Arab countries, they all went into darkness. Allah flipped the sun and the sun is now in the west and the sun will shine all its uloom and all its realities into these regions inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa while doing the awrad, noticing that people around me are getting angry without any reason, hmm. why does this happen? We talked uh, about the energies all the time. Anytime you produce an energy, you're going to have all the negativity of people affected. And that's why we said also the full moon, this is a representation of awliyaullah. When the full moon means is in full tajalli, so powerful. That Imam Ali would often recommend fast the white days. Why fast white days? Because these are the, the, the days of the full moon's light means the white that will take away every sin and every difficulty. And its history was from something that somebody was darkened by their sins and they were told by Allah to fast those days. As a result of being fasting those days the darkness of their bad character was washed away. So the moon in its full phase is representing an immense haqqaiq from the Muhammadan heart because this is the maqam al-fardani and representing the, the, the head of all the awliya. So when they fast that day they're asking that Allah grant them maghfirah those three days of uh, fasting the white days. But in reality Allah dressing them from these awliya. 
Because awliyaullah who's in charge of that light and that station, there's a wali on the station of the sun, there's a wali on the station of the moon. When you fast those days that wali is dressing you from that reality. Where was the dalil? So that the Yusuf, uh, when he said, Allah raised me to be in charge, means I was like given a, a throne over the sun, the moon and the eleven planets. And the father who was a prophet said, don't talk about that, your brothers were going to kill you already. They hear that you became the king over this realm, they're really going to get you. So means the dalil that Allah brought into that was that, no. There are these, everything is under the authority of only Allah and pious souls. So that has a, a reality, that has a wali. When you fast those days that wali dresses you from that blessing. Because not the, the, the sun, that's the imitated light, it's not the moon, it's the imitated light. It's that reality of that soul that begin to make isharat and du'a for you. And that's why as soon as the first moon comes you're supposed to look at the minute the moon is born and comes out and read Fatiha, Surat Al-Fatiha, why? So the, 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 the tajalli that emanating in that month that the wali who's in charge of that tajalli to make du'a for you and grant you maghfirah because the tajalli is hitting that soul and dressing that out to all of creation. That's one of those halaj things, they're gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And that's what we said in Salamun Hiya Hatta Mitna Al Fajr. No, no. Lam la fi Laylatul Qadr wa madara ka maylatukum. Laylatul Qadr khairun min alfi shahar. Tanazul malaika. Tanazul malaika ti wa ruh bi idn rabbihim. Bi ruh was what? Is the Muhammadan soul. The highest purified Muhammadan soul. So there must be a Muhammadan at that maqam that taking with all malaika at his service every kulin amr, every command that coming of this light reality is coming at that maqam and that wali and that wali is dispersing that through their soul, not through their nafs, it has nothing to do with it, has to do with their soul. That's the real power station that coming on, onto this reality and he, he illuminates the entire galaxy under his command. Not only the earth but his, his power and his light goes to the entire galaxy, right? The sun illuminates all the way out to Pluto. And they found out that when the sun's photon reaches all the way to Pluto, that the photon of this sun reaches every single planet all the way through with them and keeps going all the way out. And all the way to the bottom of the earth and through the earth, kullun amr, every command of Allah through that so malaika the command that send the amr out like a Wi-Fi signal, every command is going out. And that's the, the knowledge from Ayatul Kursi. That's when we described in the tafsir of Ayatul Kursi. Ayatul Kursi says, What? Of a knowledge they don't encompass. Because that's the Wi Fi secret of their souls and the Muhammadan soul. That the Muhammadan light is the Wi Fi and uh, wireless Wi Fi. They still didn't get it but they got a little bit of Tesla because they have now everything is by power and wire. The real power it doesn't need any connection, the light bulb put into the earth they'll run the current into the earth and the light bulb will go on. So the real power sources they don't need wires it's through their soul as a Wi-Fi that goes out with all of the amr of Allah and every qudra and power upon it. So their Wi-Fi touches everything, it brings the sustenance for the creatures, what they need to eat, what they need to drink and what their existence is of their… of the power that, ex, that making them to move because they're inanimate object, how their, the leaf is, is moving is by its connection to the Wi-Fi signal of Allah Divinely lights coming out. 
bi idni rabbihim in kullin amr. So it means kullin amr is that every power that comes to a leaf is under Allah's command, kullun amr. So this Wi-Fi touches everything by the by the will of Allah through malaika wa ruh. InshaAllah, that's a bit too much. InshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وصحبه الكرام ولم يشاركنا في طريقة النشبندية العليا وسائر وصداتنا وصدقنا الفاتحة